This single thing could kill your youth ministry without you even knowing about it. Hey, my name is Eric with a K and I am the host of the Practical Youth Ministry Tips podcast and I'm so glad you joined me today. I have been involved in youth ministry for 30 plus years and there's a lot of things I've learned along the way. And I want to talk about something today that uh, I think a lot of people in youth ministry don't want to talk about. And by the way, stick around to the end of today's episode, and I've got some really great freebies I want to give to you. So here's what I want to talk about. Understanding the impact of your words. Okay, when I was in high school and especially in college, sarcasm became like a second language to me. Like I could spew out mocking and sarcasm like that was a regular thing, especially with my guy friends. Like we would just back and forth. And it was no big deal. We let it roll off our backs. I carried that over into youth ministry. And I didn't pay attention early on to the impact that that had. But when I look back, I can notice that I had students who responded the same way that I was talking. I had volunteers who would talk like that. And this may seem like it's no big deal to you. But I'm, I'm hoping that today is a day of awareness. It's so critical to understand the impact of our words and building a, an atmosphere of love and trust and comfort and acceptance in our ministries. I want to share a few stories with you. Uh, first of all, Chris Herb. Chris Herb was the area director for Young Life when I was living in Oregon. And Chris and myself and about eight other guys, seven, eight other guys, all our age, we were mid, mid-20s at the time, had been invited to be part of a small group with our pastor, Morris Sturks. And it was early on in cell phone days. Not everybody had a cell phone. I know that seems weird right now to listen to and and talk about, but not. I certainly didn't have one. And Chris walked into Morris's house on his cell phone. And I had a friend with me that was part of our group. And again, this was our first meeting. And he instigated and he's like, hey, I'm Chris Herb. I'm important. I'm on my cell phone. Well, I jumped right in and started mocking him as well. Like, look how cool I am, blah, blah, blah. Well, about 10 minutes later, we all gathered upstairs in uh, in this kind of meeting room at Morris's house. And we're about to start. And Chris says, before we start, and he looks at me, he goes, I walked into... Morris's house today and I was on the phone with a student who was struggling and you mocked me and I've got plenty of sarcastic relationships I don't need to have if this if that's what this is going to be I don't want anything to do with it and all I wanted to do be like it was him it was him (laughs) but I took that and I apologized and I I said I made a commitment that I was going to be mocking and, and be sarcastic in this group and that and a like it was such a hard thing for me to receive in that moment, but I was really thankful for it because it set the tone for our group. We made a decision as a group that that was not going to be what we were about. Now, I think this second story happened before that because Jeremy Williams was also part of that group, and I remember Jeremy was was also a young life leader. Uh, he was on staff and and. I bumped into him with some friends of mine at a movie theater and he had a bunch of middle school guys with him to go to the movies. And I jokingly said, eh, look, Jeremy, the only date he can get is a bunch of middle school boys or something to that effect. And I remember him later saying, dude, why, why, why did you say that? It made me look stupid and it made my guys that I had with me feel kind of awkward. And I was like, I didn't even think about it. Like it just flowed out. I never thought it was like any big deal. And I remember Jeremy saying that to me and I was like, dude, I am so, so sorry. I didn't, that was not my intention. I was just, I was just having fun. And, but the impact of my words were significant, not just to Jeremy, but to those boys. And I'm certain those guys were like, they don't know my relationship with Jeremy. They, you know, both Jeremy and I could be have fun with each other when there's it's us in the room and not a bunch of middle schoolers around. 
And then the final one I want to share with you is Sean O'Connor. Sean was a middle school student of mine and uh, grew up, went to college. I ended up doing his wedding, marrying him and his wife, Jill, and, and uh, have continued our friendship and love him to death. And I remember one time him and, and his best friend, Jordan, who I was also best co-best man with in his wedding, we're kind of all around and we're just kind of trashing each other and saying sarcastic things. And, and uh, it was happening a lot. And it was like over a number of days, probably weeks. And I remember Sean saying something to me to the effect of, dude, I feel like we're really sarcastic with each other and it's hindering our friendship. And I asked him, how, how do you think it's hindering us? He goes, I just feel like we can't go very deep. Like it's been like this thing just a few weeks and we typically go a lot deeper. We typically engage in more real conversations and with the sarcasm and mocking, it feels like, and he goes, and I'm owning it too. I, I'm right there with you. And I feel like it's keeping us from going anywhere that's significant. And we made a commitment in that moment that we weren't going to have sarcasm as part of our journey, as part of our relationship. We we're just going to kind of bat and mocking, cut it out. And it uh, became a rule in my family. Uh, and we tend to live pretty closely by it. Every now and then there's some stuff that drips out. Because like I said, there was a time that this was a second language. It just was regular part of me. But the impact on our on our relationships can be significant. And I get it. Like we can do this with our friends and, and it, it rolls off our backs. That kind of like some of us can do that. But people enter into your ministry and student walks in. Let's say it's their first time and they don't know. They don't know you. They don't know mostly that maybe there's one friend that they brought. And it would be terrible if that friend has to say, just so you know, my youth pastor is pretty sarcastic and we just have this thing and it goes back and forth. It's no big deal. That'd be rough. Or if on the way home in the car, that first time guest friend of a student says, dude, what's up with your youth pastor and your volunteer and all the adult leaders? They're all so sarcastic, mocking each other. They mocked you. Like, I don't get it. Like that could have such a devastating impact on your ministry. That is not what I want for you. That is not what I want for me. Scripture talks about how we shouldn't let no unwholesome words come out of our mouths. And, you know, there's a there's a line there. We have we kind of sometimes we dance around it a bit and we don't want to be like, well, don't don't mess with who I am. That's just part of who I am. I get it. I get it. But I'm hoping today is maybe a bit of self-awareness and a light bulb's going off for you that you can see that this kind of language has a potential to be detrimental to your ministry. And I believe it will it can kill your ministry without you even knowing it. Like students not showing up because they just don't want to be around that. Losing volunteers. Parents coming to talk to you going, what's up? So I want to talk just a couple of strategies for removing sarcasm from the conversation. First of all, recognize that it's a reality for you. If that's something that's part of you, recognize it's a reality for you. And then speak it. Share it with other people. Say, hey, I, I, I feel like sarcasm mocking has been kind of part of what I do on a regular basis. And, and I'm working on that. God's refining me. Second thing is I, I would, if I could encourage you, if I were, if I were in your ministry and, I'm, and I was sitting there listening and I just said, hey, why don't you just make a rule with your leaders? Say, we're not going to be sarcastic with each other and with our students. We're not going to mock each other and our students. It's going to be a, a place where we have an atmosphere of love and encouragement and, and, and making students and others feel loved and welcomed and cared for. Like set that up, have the conversation. Let your leaders know that this is important to you. Make it important to you and model it. Remember, sarcasm and mocking, it can be a silent killer for your ministry. Talk about it, recognize it, tell others, 
and then do some training with your leaders about the power and the importance of our words. Now, I, I mentioned earlier in, in at the beginning of this episode that I've got some freebies. And here's what I want to do. I want to give you a collection of postcards, th- a couple of thank you cards and some you're kind of like you're the best postcards that you can take and write as encouragement notes to your volunteers and students. I'm telling you the power of a handwritten note is so incredible. And maybe you start, instead of pouring out the sarcasm and the mocking, what you get known for is being the the encourager, the kind, loving person that you truly are on the inside. And that just spills out on the outside from you. So in the description below, you can click the link and I, and it's a Canva file that I've made several of these postcards. Would love for you to, to have that as a free gift uh, from me just for, for hanging out to the end of this podcast. And if this has been helpful, would you share it? And don't share it as like, hey, I think that person really needs to hear this. Uh, or maybe it is, maybe it is, I don't know. But um, use it as an encouragement for somebody else. And uh, if if the other things on this channel are helpful, hit that subscribe button and uh, notification. And so you know when the next episode comes, we put it out every single week, new episode lands. And uh, we I really appreciate you coming on and joining me today. I know this is more of a kind of a heavier subject, but I think it's an important one. And I hope it has been an encouragement to you and helpful in your journey. God bless you and we'll catch you next week. See you.